Hey guys, this is Zara Bike Wonder and a content creator. And on today's video, I will be giving some tips on how to shoot cinematic video by just using your mobile phone. And I will be using the newest Vivo X70 and will be testing its camera features. So without further ado, let's get into it. videos you saw a while ago were all shot using this powerful mobile phone. I'm not saying that a smartphone can replace the mirrorless camera but if you're someone like me who prefer to carry less on a spontaneous adventure, you would probably be using your smartphone most of the time, right? First things first, you need a quality smartphone for taking photos and videos. I've been testing the Vivo X70 for a month now at masasabi ko talaga na yung gimbal stabilization really stands out on this phone camera. Vivo is the first smartphone phone brand to introduce the gimbal technology in its camera kaya tested na talaga siya in the market you will be needing a stabilizer to create a more cinematic video but since this one has in-body stabilization hindi mo na kinakailangan pang gumamit ng gimbal but later I will discuss it further camera settings napakalaga ng camera settings before you hit that record button always shoot in landscape not portrait nakakita ka na ba ng movie na naka portrait mode resolution there's 4K and there's 1080p always choose the best resolution to create a better quality video. Pag mas mataas yung resolution mo, like 4K, mas kaya mo siya i-rescale pagdating sa editing. At mas sharp na rin siya at the same time. This Vivo X70 has 4K, kaya sobrang sharp naman talaga ng mga video niya. I always shoot at 4K 60fps para mas mas slow mo ko siya at magkaroon tayo ng more dramatic feels on the video. Yung 60fps, yun yung ginagamit ko usually kapag may mga beautiful scenery so I can slow-mo it. And I use 24fps when I'm cycling around to get a more real-time video. Pero madalas ginagamit ko din yung 60fps kapag gusto ko siya mas slow-mo. So when I'm cycling or when I'm vlogging, gamit yung front camera. I'm using 1080p 30 frames per second para mas realistic yung shot natin. At kapag naman gusto ko talaga ng mga intense na dramatic feels, doon ko ginagamit yung slow-mo feature. This phone has high-speed recording feature o yung naka-slow-mo na siya. Hindi mo na kailangan slow-mo sa editing. Example, yung shot ko ng tumatalon sa falls, doon ko ginagamit yung slow-mo feature ng mobile phone. Kunyari yung falls, gumagamit din ako ng slow-mo feature nun para mas dramatic yung scenario natin. Tsaka kapag may mga fast movements, like yung mga muddy sa trail, para maganda yung effect, di ba? Pero tip lang, don't overuse slow-mo. Hindi porket may slow-mo feature ka, slow-mo na lahat ng shot mo. Gagamitin mo lang siya kapag merong sobrang intense na action. Other camera settings, make sure to lock the exposure of your phone to avoid unnecessary change of lighting and produce better image quality. You just have to simply tap this and the exposure will automatically lock. So for the camera settings, white balance, ginagamit ko usually is auto, but depende pa rin kasi yan sa situation. When it's super bluish, like nunyari na sa mga indoor ka na magma-manual white balance talaga ako pagdating doon. Pagdating naman sa time ng shooting, I prefer shooting tuwing golden hour. So meaning tuwing 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. Tapos mga mga 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Para hindi harsh yung sunlight. And you can produce more stunning photos and videos kasi ang ganda ng ilaw natin. Gumising kayo na umaga para ma-achieve nyo yung sunrise effect. At iba kasi yung effect kapag hindi sunrise at kapag sobrang harsh ng light. Camera angle is super important as well. So as much as possible, wag lang kayong basta nakaganto lang all throughout. Try nyo gumalaw-galaw na ganto. At least hindi boring yung shot na all throughout nakaganto lang yung angle. Para at the same time, yung viewer natin, mapipil nila na nandun sila sa video. Another tip para hindi maging boring yung video nyo, mag-shoot kayo ng variety of shots. So, meron slow-mo, time-lapse, at meron din kayo mga different angles and camera movement. Nandito ako ngayon sa empty space at as you can see, wala namang anything na ganap dito. So, titingnan natin kung paano natin siya pagmumukha yung cinematic look. And, uh, ito lang yung gumagalaw right now. So, Magiging cinematic siya. Gamit nga lang kayo ng different camera movements para magmukhang cinematic yung mga bagay-bagay. Wala tayong ano, unfortunately, walang sun, sunset ngayon. So, better sun if may flare effect ka. Ito yung mga different types of camera movement. Gagamitin ko tong ultra stabilization nitong Vivo X70 para mas stabilize yung shot natin. Iida dali in at saka dali out ko lang siya.
Ayan, gagawa na lang ako ng separate tutorial about different gimbal movements using your mobile phone. Pero yun lang so far yung mga tips na mabibigay ko. Another super important when it comes in taking cinematic video is the stability. Would you like to watch a movie na sobrang shaky? Unless, di ba, may hinahabol ka ng mga action shot. Thankfully, the Vivo X70 has 5-axis ultra-stable video and lessened the shakiness of the shot. It has two options, the standard stabilization and super stabilization. So, kapag naka-ultra stabilization ka, nagiging 1080p yung resolution natin. At kapag naman naka-standard stabilization tayo, nagiging 4K pa rin yung resolution natin. Ultra stabilization kapag may mga intense movement, kapag nagbabike, ganun. At kapag naman mga simple shots, like shot ng waterfalls, kasi gusto ko pa rin kasi yung 4K, ginagamit ko lang yung standard stabilization. Here is sample shot of this phone shot with standard stabilization. And here is sample shot of this phone with ultra stabilization. And here are some shots of this Vivo X70 without stabilization. Ayun lang, make sure nyo gumamit kayo ng different focal length when shooting. Meron siyang option ng telephoto, wide, at saka yung standard mode. Usually, standard lang naman yung ginagamit ko at ako na lang din yung nag adjust Minsan, adjust-adjust ka rin pag may time, di ba? Ito yung quality kapag naka-standard yung shot natin. Ito naman yung quality kapag naka-zoom or naka-telephoto yung video natin. So, as you can see, medyo nag-iiba yung quality niya at ibang-iba siya compared sa standard. At ito naman yung quality kapag naka-wide yung video natin. So, usually ginagamit ko lang lagi dito is yung standard mode. At ako na lang din yung nag adjust sa shot. As much as possible, wag lang kayo basta naka-steady lang sa shot. Galaw-galaw din, paminsan-minsan. Maganda meron kang iba't ibang klase ng shot mag-iba ka ng angle. So, minsan nakaupo ka, tapos minsan bird's eye view. So, mas maganda talaga kung iba't ibang klase ng shot yung gagamitin natin. Meron din palang feature ng time-lapse itong phone. Transfer muna tayo ng location para maiba naman. So, meron naman tayong tinatawag na aperture. So, eto, gagamitin ko itong ngayong bokeh feature nitong Vivo X70. Nakabokeh ako dito ngayon. Naka 1.2 ngayon tong bokeh ko. So, medyo papansin nyo, blur blurry yung background natin. At ako lang yung focus ng camera. Ang ganda kasi mayroong gantong feature itong Vivo X70. Aperture, imagine nyo yung buka ng mata natin. So, more na mababa yung aperture, like this one is 1.4, the more na blurry yung background. At ito lang yung napopocus, yung certain subject lang. At the more na mataas yung aperture, like mga 5.0, the more na masharp yung video at napopocus yung buong subject. So example, magsushoot ka ng ganitong subject, landscape siya, gagamit ka ba ng bokeh? Siyempre hindi, kasi yung gusto mo ma-focus is yung buong to. So right now, ang gagamitin nating aperture is naka F16 tayo. So yan, pag mga ganito, gumamit ka ng mataas na aperture. At kapag naman mga gusto mo ng kuhanan yung puno na yun, na yun lang yung focus, gagamit tayo ng 2.8 na aperture. The summer is the review of this Vivo X70. Here's a video compilation shot on the Vivo X70.
testing this mobile phone for videography. Now let's see how it performs on photography. Uh, Lipat naman muna tayo ng location para medyo summer naman yung dating. I've been using this Vivo X70 for a month now. Sabi ko sobrang sharp na mga photos ng ng phone na to when it comes in taking photos. It's sharp enough because they partnered up with Zeiss Technology. This phone camera has 40 megapixel in its rear main camera with 12 megapixel when shot on wide angle and 12 megapixels on portrait mode. And the front camera has 32 megapixels. Bonga, de ba? I was also able to test this at night and it performs really well even without a tripod. It's because this phone has gimbal stabilization 3.0 accompanied with a bespoke Sony IMX 766V that provides a more crystal clear shot and it has superb night camera and AI algorithm. I usually ask stranger or people I don't know to take a photo of me and sobrang mahalaga na meron tayong phone na can capture great image quality especially for me that I love taking photos and videos so nagpa-picture ako nung sa dagat at kitang-kita ko yung quality ng photo nito since meron nga siyang 40 megapixels kita mo yung detail ng mga shot kahit na naka-phone lang yung gamit natin. Yun nga, meron din siyang different options pagdating sa portrait mode. Pagdating dito, napapalitan mo yung style pagdating sa portrait mode. So, pwede natin gamitin yung Biotor, Sonar, Playtor, Distagon, Natural, Vintage, French, Flash, Party. Both of these photos are shot using Zeiss technology. The other one is shot by a mirrorless camera using a Zeiss lens. And the other one is shot by the Vivo X70 with Zeiss technology. Can you actually tell the difference between the two? Ang hirap, di ba? Napakalakit tulong talaga na 256 gig na yung yung capacity ng phone na to. Meron din siyang 12 gig of RAM na napakabilis. So especially I'm using this for my drone shots. And so din kasi pumupunta ako sa mga lugar na wala masyadong kuryente. Meron tong battery na 4400 mAh. Paka long lasting ng battery nito and it can last mo in more than 2 days. Napakabilis din niya mag-charge kasi meron siyang 44 watt. Actually inaabot lang siya ng 30 minutes sa uh, pagdating sa pag-charge. Favorite ko kasi sa phone na to is yung bokeh part niya. Now when it comes on taking videos and taking vlogs, I can shoot this by using the front camera with bokeh na rin. So I was able to use this with 1.4 aperture at rinay ko din yung rear niya. Pwede rin mabago yung aperture niya. Ang ganda rin ng quality ng audio nito. So, trinay ko yung audio nito for vlogging. Meron siyang option. Hindi ko na kailangan na external mic kasi pwede ko ma-off yung ambient noise. So, akala ko lusong na yung bababa. May ahon pa rin mo na. Ang maganda kasi dito sa Vivo X70 is meron siyang pro mode sa photo and video na pwede mong mabago yung mga camera settings pagdating sa ISO and shutter speed. Pero ayun nga lang, hindi mo malang mababago yung aperture pagdating sa pro video. At the end of the day, having a great grey is just a plus. If you don't know how to properly frame your video, proper camera settings, and tell a story to your audience, mawawala din yung essence ng quality niya. So make sure to take note of my tips. If may mga nalimutan pa akong tips, feel free to add it on the comment section below. Or, and if you like this video and if you want to purchase this phone, meron akong link sa description below. Check nyo na lang at mabibili nyo siya sa flagship store ng Lazada ng Vivo Philippines. So, ayan. Thank you for watching this review of Vivo X70 and I hope you learned something from me. Once again, this is Zar, your content creator and see you on my next video. And I am here right now in the heart of the Philippines, Vito sa Marinduque Island.